Welcome to Tales from the Fandom, a podcast that brings a special guest out of the multiverse and straight to you. And now your host, David Ginsberg. Hello, everybody, and welcome to the latest episode of Tales from the Fandom. I am here just for some simple housekeeping stuff before we get into the episode with Nate Ward of Inked Geek Studios. Uh, first things first is that upcoming in the month of June is Women in Tabletop Gaming Month. Every day during that month, we will be releasing a special episode focusing on women in tabletop gaming. You can find out more information by going to womenintabletopgaming.com. The website is slowly evolving to add more content to that, as well as a calendar of releases and just further information about that project. So definitely go check that out. Also, Tales from the Five Nations is out with uh, nine episodes as we record this episode. And I just wanted you to know that it is an actual play podcast uh, mixing the Eberron campaign setting with Savage Worlds rule system. And you can just find that uh, just by searching for Tales from the Five Nations uh, on Facebook or just in your uh, podcast app and you'll definitely find it. And I hope you take a listen to it. And last things is that we have a Patreon account where if you like Tales from the Fandom or Tales from the Five Nations, you can get episodes early in advance as well as some additional uh, goodies. Uh, definitely check that out at patreon.com slash Tales from the Fandom and see if you would like to help support the podcast. And now, as we normally do, we'll have a quick uh promo from another podcast and then we'll get into the episode with nate thanks so much once upon a time there was a gnome once upon a time there was an elf. once upon a time there was a little once upon a time there was a once upon a time there was a time there was a once upon a time there was an old rock once upon a time 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 and no one lived happily ever after fairy tales for unwanted children Find us on iTunes or at periodically.ca. And welcome to another episode of Tales from the Fandom. Welcome back, everybody. And we are kicking off April with one of my favorite people to follow on social media. And I was fortunate enough to be a guest on his show, and now he is on ours. I am joined by Nate Ward of Inked Geek Studios. Welcome to the podcast, Nate. Hello, David. Thank you very much for having me on. Uh, after the rescheduling, I was excited that we could get something in quick and have me come back. Yeah, I'm absolutely thrilled. I mean, it, it was one of those things where your show was one of those first podcasts that I got to be a guest on. And it, it kind of changed me as far as like, oh, I want to be a guest on other podcasts. And I always like to have the people that... I get to be on their show, come back and be on the, our show here, my show. That's really cool. And it, it means a lot to me for you to say that because it was be, doing a, a, a guesting podcast was something that I wanted to do and I wasn't sure how it was going to go. And it seems to be one way or the other, like people enjoy being a guest or they're like, I am never guesting on a podcast again. <laughs> <laughs> What's funny is like, I've had people come on this podcast as guests and just recently a few of them have started their own podcast so i'm like wow that's really great like hopefully you had such a positive experience on this one that you started your own show and i'm it, that like that's the neat thing to see is just people evolving over time and seeing what they come up with next it is it is kind of a bug that bites you and starts to spread i mean i started as a fan and went whole hog on getting the studio off the ground and now uh, I mean, almost four years later, it's still going and it's, it's crazy. And I think back and it's, it's crazy that it's, I mean, it, cause it'll be, uh, it'll be four years in June and, uh, it's, it's crazy how far it's come and, and the people I've met and yeah, it's an incredible, it's an incredible ride. And, uh, I, I encourage anyone who has a voice, like if you've got a voice and a computer or even just a phone, like it, it's so fun and you, it's amazing the people that you touch and encounter. Exactly. And you are a fan of a lot of different things. You you called yourself before we started recording that like you're a, you're a jack of all uh, things, essentially, that you're into just a lot of different things. I, I am. Yeah, I, I mean, I have I have my things that I really geek out about, but 
especially coming from the podcaster end, uh, you know, for some of our shows, I like to be as knowledgeable as I can. So I try to focus on different things and not, not have like a narrow vision. Um, again, I have my preferences, but like I try and focus more on genres than mm -hmm. individual titles. Um, like, you know, I don't, just love world of warcraft i love mmos and i want to try them all um you know i don't just love like star wars i love sci-fi fantasy like so i try and broaden my horizons and and be a be a fan of geekdom as opposed to a fan of a singular thing absolutely i think that's one of the best ways to do it because you're not limiting yourself just to that one thing you're actually getting out there to try and experience a lot of the different stuff and i think that's one of the harder things to do is be open to, well, I like Star Wars. Let me go check out some sci-fi books that maybe have just come out from an author I've never heard of or see a sci-fi movie that might be out of the realm of what I normally watch. Exactly. And part of it is, too, is we've we've become very volatile as a geek culture. I mean, I, I'm in my mid-30s, and, you know, when I grew up and, like, going into high school – uh, and man, do I sound old saying when I grew up, uh, <laughs> going into high school, like EverQuest was the thing. And I remember it like it was yesterday. It was me and my friend Noah, the first ginger I was ever friends with. Um, and, uh, me and my friend Noah, and we would be in the basement of Deering high school in Portland playing EverQuest on our laptops, because that's where you went as a geek, it, the, the basement during like the, the study hall break and the lunch period. The basement was reserved for the geeks and the goths, and that's where you went because geek geekdom wasn't like – it wasn't pop culture at that point. It was getting there, but it, mm -hmm. it, it wasn't quite – I mean the comic book movies were bad and everything else like that. Like we were still fighting for validity, and so that's – so we kind of huddled into a pack, and it didn't matter what you played. It didn't matter what you listened to. It was, it was kind of like with music. Like if you liked metal, you liked metal, or if you liked country, you liked country, and, and that's how it was. If you liked gaming, you liked gaming, and we liked to talk about games. And now that geekdom has become the thing, like, you know, I mean, our, our pro gamers are the jocks of the 90s. I mean, the League of Legends players, now the Overwatch players, stuff like that. Like they're the cool kids now. And because – we really have that power like anything else, whether you're talking about a, a country that becomes too powerful like Rome or something like that, you start crumbling from the inside. And I think that's what's happening with geekdom is we're picking teams and it's dividing us. And I think that that is one of the worst things that's happening to geekdom. I mean, you have it in streamers, like streamers fight like about what type of streamers they are and gamers, like, are you a PC gamer or are you a console, like console pleb or whatever? And, um, mm -hmm. what console do you, and, and I, and I very much, and I can certainly, and you follow me, like you said, on social media, so I can definitely get in and throw down. Um, but at the end of the day, I like to see everyone getting along because it's like, guys, we're all here for the same thing. Like, where's that, where'd that respect among gamers go? Right. It's uh, exactly because you, I think I, I'm wagering I'm at least like, two years older than you because everquest was a thing already and i think i was out of high school at the time because i remember playing uh wolfenstein the original wolfenstein like in drafting class and like yeah that was the thing back then is Dude, that mecha hitler was awesome <laughs> yeah is like is like you know the 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 people that did that like my social circle like we were like the outcasts like i didn't talk about going to star trek conventions I didn't talk about like my comic books except for to like those few people that kind of knew me well enough because otherwise like I was in that that outer circle of the high school life of okay for lunch I'm going to where the computers are and we're going to like eat lunch and play Wolfenstein or when Doom came out and you know we were all blown away by Doom and oh my gosh Doom everything but yeah it's so it's so crazy now with like especially uh, you know, I'm going to bring up a topic here like Star Wars, where you have people talking about like how Star Wars has been ruined. And I'm sitting here like, I, I don't know what number one, I don't know what you're watching, because I don't see anything ruining it, per right. se. Are, there's changes. But at the same time, we're the same culture back in the late 90s that are like, 
we want George Lucas to be gone from Star Wars. Get his hands off of Star Wars and give it to someone else. Well, now that's been done, and now everyone's like, not everyone, but you know, like a good. There's a majority or a minority of loud vocal minority that's you know anti anti whatever is being done to the Star Wars universe at this point. Right. See, I'm in I'm in such a unique situation when it comes to Star Wars. So I'm I'm 33. Uh, I'll be 34 uh, in two days at the release of this episode. Uh, but um, yeah, so I never – so here's the thing. I never saw the original trilogy in its entirety mm -hmm. until after I saw the prequels. So right, which, like I which... knew – I knew all the spoilers. Like I knew that Vader was Luke's dad and like, I like all this other stuff. Like I knew that, but like, I never sat and watched them. Um, I'm not a Jar Jar hater. Uh, I have no problem with him. I think he's funny. I still think he's funny. In, in fact, I find Jar Jar less annoying than C-3PO. Like C <laughs> C-3PO is classic and I don't think they should get rid of him because he's tradition at this point, <clears throat> but I could sit and listen to Jar Jar talk longer than that annoying voice of 3PO. Um, but I try and take them for what they are. And I think people, especially people who were children or young adults in 77 when A New Hope came out or Star Wars, because it wasn't A New Hope then. Uh, I think what they experienced was a movie that had some things that adults could enjoy, but was mostly for kids or, or young adults. It was uh, a, a, a science. It was a fantasy story in space. And I, I have that contention or I have that opinion with Star Wars. Uh, Star Wars to me, it's not sci-fi. I'm not a big sci-fi guy. I'm not, I don't like Star Trek, but Star Wars is fantasy in space because they like your Jedi and your Sith or your wizards. They have spell powers and you have sword fights. Mm -hmm. So it's a fantasy story. Uh, so, if they're for kids and when when you when you get to the prequels you know starting in 99 going to 03 they were for kids like you had jar jar who was obviously that trilogy's c3po and his the comic relief and whatnot uh and then you know you're 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 one of your main characters in episode one was a, a boy so you know kids could relate there it was a boy who felt out of place and felt like he didn't belong where he was because destiny meant for him to be more and that was something that kids could relate to so there was a relatable story there for kids uh i love the pod racing scene i think it was a beautifully done scene i know people hate that so so that all that being said you know that now you fast forward you go to 20 what was it 15 or yep that that seven was released um yeah and uh you get to 2015 and you've got kylo who is very clearly an angsty teenager and you've got Ray, who is becoming and has, has now become a great, powerful role model for female fans. And it's it's wonderful. I mean, yeah, sure. Something like you have the argument that seven was four in HD. Fine. Four was at that point in time, you know, almost 30 years ago. So let it be like let the new generation experience it. But. Uh, I mean, and we can even branch this out a little bit further, whether it's, again, Star Wars, you could talk about it with Ghostbusters, but the new Ghostbusters that came out a couple of years ago, um, mm -hmm. you could talk about it with World of Warcraft, where that goes back 13 years. Everyone's like, oh, you ruined my childhood, or it's not my Warcraft, or it's not my Ghostbusters. It's like, fine, yours didn't go away. It's still there. Like, <laughs> let, like, go watch Egon and, and Ray and, and, you know, all them. And like, it's, it's fine. It's, it's okay. Like let, and, and uh, what is it? Like, shh, let people enjoy things. Like, I, I don't know. Like, again, this goes back to the kind of the point of like the argumentative state. And that's how, kind of how you brought it up. Like, like, sure. It's not what you wanted, but let people enjoy it. Like there's a lot of things about everything that is enjoyable to a point. Um, I loved eight. I, I loved it front and back uh i thought admittedly the second time seeing it that some scenes like the casino thing and stuff they were a little slow um but i loved it uh there were some things that i would change if i was in control but i'm perfectly happy with what ryan did and i'm excited to see what he does with his own trilogy post episode nine mm -hmm. yeah it's it's so it's it's the thing like like you said it's not like we've erased 
whatever came before. It's still there. You can still watch it. It is still accessible. It's like um it's like the people that are like, I want the original Star Wars, not like the special edition Star Wars. Well, then you have the people that want the special editions because it adds a little bit extra or it adds like CGI. And like you grew up with the the prequels and that's what you grew up with. And it's it's so frustrating to see people talk about like it's not mine. It's or you like you ruined my childhood. Like, you know what? I can go back to my childhood stuff and and I can watch it, but admittedly, some of the stuff that I'm watching is garbage and I know it's garbage at this point and it's the it's the memories of where I was as the child watching it that makes it so great. I had a moment of that <clears throat> with Power Rangers. Um so I I grew up watching Power Rangers. I was a big fan and we're talking like original Power Rangers like Zordon and Jason and Zack and Billy and then eventually yep. Tommy is the green and then ultimately White mm -hmm. Ranger like OG Power Rangers. Yes. So I I have a, an old old friend uh Garrett who that was our thing. It was Power Rangers costumes and the masks and all the figures and we would have all these big battles in someone's respective living room or bedroom and and um very young very young boys and and enjoying our Power Rangers fandom. And my son who is 3, he'll uh he loves Power Rangers Dino Charge because you know, he's a 3-year-old mm -hmm. obsessed with dinosaurs. And it's funny like I'll watch it because, you know, he'll come and hang out in the the studio game room and we'll put it up on the 4K and he'll watch it and I'll just see it in the side. I'm like, man, I was like, Power Rangers got bad. Like, this is this is horrible. Like, and then like you go back and watch it and like, wait a second, what I watched wasn't any better. Because <laughs> <laughs> uh, it's because I mean, I don't know if you know the origins of Power Rangers, but with the original and, and it's different now, obviously, but with the original Power Rangers they, that wasn't them in the fight scenes. That was a movie or a TV show from Japan. And they cut out all the fight scenes, refilmed the out of costume scenes with the American actors, and then voiced over the fight scenes, which yeah. gave the show a very small cost. So it allowed it to be successful at a, at a, at a, at a low budget because they didn't have to do any of the, any of the effects. Uh, but it was great. I mean, there are things like I still remember – uh, what was it? Uh, Rita had taken Tommy's power away because she destroyed the green crystal and there was a new white ranger and it was a two-part episode and the end of part one was Billy looking over and the white light shining on him with like a shocked look on his face and I remember the next day of school my mom picked me up from school and we went to Joanne Fabrics and I'm like we gotta go Power Rangers is on at four like I need to see who the white ranger is and it's funny like, it's not something that gets talked about every day, obviously, but, like, coming back and having a conversation, like, that moment and that memory is so ingrained into me, and it's something that I'll never forget because it had that impact on me. Uh, and it's, yeah, but, no, again, back to the overarching point of, like, it ruined my childhood. Like, the thing is, and I think that we forget this as fans, South Park even did an episode about this. They did an episode where the kids tried to, prevent like they tried to destroy the master copy of indiana jones to prevent george lucas and steven spielberg from making another one and the argument in that episode was that those movies are also now ours and i don't know if i agree with that uh i agree that the fandom is ours and i agree that the love for it is ours but it's ultimately their story and if you go and you watch any of the behind the scenes of original 1977 Star Wars, there were a lot of things that had to be cut because of budget. There were also sets that were completely destroyed by storms that screwed up the budget. Mm -hmm. So what you ultimately get in the, the, the final fully quote unquote touched up remastered version of Star Wars you get what George Lucas wanted to do in 77. You get what he would have done if he had the money to. Now, the only thing that doesn't maybe get qualified in that is the big controversy of Han shooting first. Uh, see, now for me, I like the change. And the reason I like the change is because Han 
winds up becoming a team player. He falls in love with Leia. They ultimately have a son that we know of now. Um, and he dies trying to save his son. He's, he is a man. He probably has the biggest heart in the galaxy. He dies trying to save Ben, trying to save Ben and bring him back to the light. So the man is compassionate. He is loving. He is caring. He takes on uh, Chewbacca. And I, I think it was a, a blood debt or something like that. Uh, and we're going to get more information of that in the solo movie. But it was, um, you know, like like some sort of blood pact or something. But he, he cares for Chewie. I mean, Chewie's not a pet. He's his best friend. Like this man mm-hmm. has heart and this man has love. And you want to make him a murderer in the very first time we see him on screen? Like, that doesn't make any sense. That doesn't fit the character. Like, when Star Wars was a standalone and he was purely just the scoundrel, sure, it fit. But as Lucas made Episode 5 and Episode 6 and saw the growth of the character, he realized that it made no sense. It doesn't make any sense for this man who we are now are supposed to love as a character and who Leia, a princess, is supposed to love. It doesn't make any sense that he murders somebody in the first five minutes, of not even the first two minutes of us seeing him. Like, it doesn't make any sense. And I get it. It might weaken him or it makes him whatever. I mean, have whatever opinion that you want. And if that's your opinion, that's 100% fine, which is my point. But to me, I think that it is more aligned with the Han that we see in 5, 6, and 7. Okay, I can I can understand that. Like I, I am definitely in the camp of I like Han shooting first. Okay, uh, just but again, it's definitely something where I think at the time that they were doing it, when it was supposed to be Star Wars, and that was going to be it at that point. That yeah, that I can totally understand that. And then with the realigning, especially with not being able to do whatever uh, Lucas wanted to do with the sets and the the money issues and everything. Uh, realigning the character as that went on um of course you know i have my own personal issues about like what what disney did with with all the books and everything but you know you can't take on 30 years of published material and and try to work that into a movie no and it really and i i'm okay with that it really would have tied their hands with making content as well um I never read the books. My biggest gripe with the 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 decanonization of everything was losing the old republic. Uh, mm-hmm. That really kind of poked me because I loved the games and I liked the MMO for what it was. Uh, but now, what was it like? Middle of last year or so, in an episode of Rebels, uh, we had the Mandalorian Wars recanonized, and those took place at the time of the Old Republic. So we'll see what they do. I mean, maybe a Netflix series or a, a series on Disney's new streaming service coming in 2019. Uh, all I want is Revan. I, I, I mean. Now that we have Kylo, it might be a little odd because, I mean, the mask and everything else like that, a lot of that was influenced from Revan. Mm -hmm. But I would love to see Darth Revan, uh, or depending on how far far back they go, maybe even Revan as a Jedi. Uh, I would love to see him on screen and see his story told. Maybe maybe it's a one-off. Maybe it's a, a Star Wars story, but I would still love to see Revan on screen. Yeah, I, I'm in the, the camp of give me whatever you want to give me because it's like... I went into like I went into seven skeptical and I wasn't like super hyped about it and Rogue One even less so. But Rogue One was that movie where I was like, if you do what you do in this movie, like in all your future like standalone movies, I will take everything, please. The only thing about Rogue One, and now I I didn't hate it. I a friend of mine, fellow podcaster, uh, who dis buys is real quiet. Um, I don't hate it. I, I think it's, again, a little slow. Uh, it's not a Star Wars movie. It's a military... It, they, they pulled a Marvel. So, to tangent a little bit, the, the reason I feel that Marvel is so successful with their superhero movies, they're not making superhero movies. They're making right. genre movies. They're like... Uh, the uh the, the new the new mutants movie coming out is it the new it's not the new mutants but uh the the the, the horror one that's coming out in in a little while uh it's yeah, a that's ho- new mutants oh is it new mutants okay it's a horror movie yeah. but it has superheroes um ant man exactly. was a heist movie that had superheroes uh so they're not making superhero movies and i think that that's where dc is struggling is they're trying to make a superhero movie and that's not what marvel's doing uh so to go back to what I was saying with Star Wars, like 
they, they, they pulled a Marvel and it's the same company. So it makes sense. Rogue One is not a Star Wars movie. It's a military suicide mission movie in Star Wars. Mm -hmm. And I think that that is what like they had to do a very difficult thing in Rogue One. And what they had to do was they had to introduce you to make you love and then kill characters in two hours. <laughs> because anyone that knows the story knows that they're all going to die because we don't see any of them in four. So we know that your main characters, I mean, yeah, you have, obviously you got Vader and you got the, the, the captain of, of the, the ship and stuff like that, like who go forward, but like the main characters in Rogue One, like, you know, none of them are going to transcend the movie because they can't. <laughs> uh, so, right. you know, going into it, essentially what the end of it kind of is. So they, again, they had to, they had to introduce your characters get you to love the characters and then take those characters from you. And in that, I think they executed it very well. Uh, the be I, to me, the best part of Rogue One was the droid. I thought he was great. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah, definitely. Yeah, K2SO was my favorite of the entire cast. Yeah, his, uh, I, it's, it's, it's escaping me the name of the actor who did the voice. Oh, Alan Tudyk. Yeah, Tudyk, thank you. Yeah, no, he, he nailed it out of the park. <laughs> Uh, and I like that he got to do the, um, the, I have a bad feeling about, and then they cut him off. Mm -hmm. Yep. So that was actually my gripe to keep it in star Wars for a moment. That was my, that was my only gripe. My only big gripe with eight was they didn't, no one said the line and I didn't realize that BB eight says it in the very beginning. And that's why Poe says like, man, stay positive. We've been in worse things than this because when BB eight beeps, he beeps. I've got a bad feeling about this. Right. I, I read that in uh, like a spoiler beforehand because right. I, I think, you know, people have brought that up like, oh, it's not said anywhere. And, you know, you, you take a look and you're like, oh, OK, well, they're coming out and now telling you exactly where it is. Indeed. Oh. <laughs> yeah. And, and as you know, you were talking about the Marvel movies, I think um, I think it's Kevin Feige, uh, the, the Marvel guy that kind of like oversees everything. He's he I think he actually said what you had said. He, he said we're not making superhero movies. We're making movies that just happen to have superheroes in them. Oh, did he say that? Now and... everyone's just going to think I copied him. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't yeah, realize. He, and yeah. I think, yeah, he said it like, like early on, I think, because um, they were talking, I think it might've even come out around the time when uh, like Ant-Man was coming out because, you know, Ant-Man is like that movie where, I think like a lot of people don't like it, but I love Ant Man. I, I love it. I thought it was the great. whole concept of it, and it was like it works on so many different levels. Like you get the inclusion into like the Marvel universe, but at the same time, it's like it's, it could have been just a standalone movie too. Dude, it was a heist movie with Honey, I Shrunk the Kids in the Marvel universe. <laughs> like how how can you go wrong? Um, no, I I thought it was great. Uh, I thought the acting was good. Uh, I thoroughly enjoyed it. It was. I, I buy all the Marvel movies on digital when they get released uh, just to have them because the kids like them too. And I think that's the only one that I have consciously sat and rewatched, you know, three or four times because I really like uh, Paul Rudd. I think he's great in it. It's just, I, I mean, it was, a, it was a total change of character for him too. Like you're not used to seeing, I, he was goofy sometimes, but like, you're not mm -hmm. really used to seeing him. Like, you know, I think Paul Rudd's biggest, at least, I mean, I, I'm not a big Paul Rudd fan, but to me, like where I know him from most other than Ant-Man is the stuff with Will Ferrell. Uh, and right. like his character in Anchorman, where he's like the womanizer and like, that's Ant-Man. <laughs> so <laughs> it's, it's interesting to make that. Uh, that disconnect and no, I, I Rudd, Rudd surprised me and surprised me in every way that I needed him to for me to enjoy that movie. Yeah, the only the only one that I have watched a lot of times out of the Marvel movies is uh, Captain America: Winter Soldier. That's the one where I'm like, that's like that's the one that nails it for me. Is that movie? It's the only one I haven't seen in its entirety. Uh, I saw one. I went and saw Civil War in the theater. I thought Civil War was a little much in that I think once you get to ensembles, it's hard, mm -hmm. especially when you're introducing new characters in the ensemble. Um, right. Like, and I, I guess they were new to me because I'm not familiar with their with their comic book stories. 
Uh, but like obviously Spider Man, everyone knows Spider Man. Uh, but like I'm not familiar with Black Panther, so like that whole like the Wakanda thing and stuff like that, like it was done well, and the trailer for the new movie looks incredible. But like I didn't, I had no connection to him. Like he was just he, he was just a dude in a suit beating people up. But he was cool. Mm-hmm. Um, but yeah, so I don't know. I mean, Winter Soldier, the character is amazing, and he was great. And I'm excited to see more of him, but no, I, I own it. I own it on digital, but I, I got to go back and watch it. <laughs> um, yeah, I just – Captain Amer- – see, it's interesting what Marvel did in that because they couldn't use the X-Men and because right. they couldn't use Spider-Man, they took B-level characters and maybe even sometimes C and D-level characters, and they made them the all-stars. Oh, yeah. I love Iron Man, but only because I love Robert Downey Jr., and we share a birthday. Um, I share a birthday with Iron Man and the Joker because Robert Downey Jr. and Heath Ledger, uh, they both have April 4th. So yeah, it's, I mean, he was great and I, I love, I love him as an actor and I love the fact that Robert Downey Jr. is basically Tony Stark. So Mm -hmm. he fits it unlike no other and it's great. Uh, I love Guardians because I love Chris Pratt and being a wrestling fan, it was cool to see Batista there and, and whatnot, but I just... I I didn't have a connection to Chris Evans in any way, um, and I didn't really care about Captain America prior to him kind of becoming, like, you know, a tough guy. Uh, I mean, not like, I mean, obviously he's strong, but I mean, like, that tough guy mentality. And so, like, I enjoyed them, and I like his I like his roles in the Avengers movies, but yeah, maybe maybe I owe that movie, you know, a couple hours to sit down and watch it front to back, because I, I, I don't doubt that I would enjoy it. Right, and and that's the thing, is that, you know... When when Marvel started doing the their licensing, like X Men, Fantastic Four, and Spider Man are all with other people, and you know the villain, some of the villains that are tied to it, and everything else. Like when you're talking about elevating people, like you're not thinking um, Iron Man, you're not thinking Thor, Cap- like because the Avengers at that point weren't really like the the key. Like you had Wolverine uh, again tied to the X Men stuff, and it's so interesting to see them come out with these movies and then get people interested in those characters. And it, it blew me away to the point where it's like, what, what are they coming out with? Cause I, I was skeptical when they're like, Oh, we're going to have an Ant-Man movie. Like I'm like, Ant-Man, like of all the characters you have to choose from, you're choosing Ant-Man. Dude, Ant-Man guardians of the galaxy, man. Like, well, yeah, that too. I'm talking rack. Like, I, I mean, who, who would have thought? And not only did guardians come out, not only did it have the best movie soundtrack of all time and not only did it like, was it successful? It, I mean, obviously the times are different, but now, you know, looking at box office, it outsold justice league Mm -hmm. guardians beat Batman and Superman. Now, again, you can blame some of that on DC, but like Marvel is nailing it, dude. Like I'm not saying DC should throw in the towel, but change the color of it at least. (laughs) Because <laughs> well, I know, I know, as a, as we're recording this, that they announced that the uh, the people that are doing uh, that did uh, Spider Man Homecoming are now working on the Flash movie. Oh well, that's good because that thing, who knew? Um, yeah, I mean, I again, I'm I, I try not to be a hater in any way. I, I haven't seen Wonder Woman front to back. I hear it's the best that they've done so far. Uh, but my daughter is a Wonder Woman fan, but she's a, uh, she's a comic Wonder Woman fan. Like, I don't think she, like we tried to watch the live action. Just, it wasn't holding her attention. Uh, but like, and I haven't, I'm, I'm sure I'll see it at some point, but like I saw Batman versus Superman in the theater and I was like, man, what did I just see? Like w- what? Like, especially after the dark Knight trilogy, like, come on, like throw, throw, Nolan, whatever money he wants, like just pay him because I promise you whatever money he wants to get him to say yes, like, cause they're, they're obviously trying to stay with the dark and gritty motif that, that the dark Knight trilogy enforced and it worked and it works for Batman and it works for several other DC characters. They, they need to not try and copy Marvel. They need to be their own thing. And yeah, Superman's bright and colorful. So sure. Make him bright and colorful. That being said, like I liked Man of Steel because Superman wasn't bright and colorful, <laughs> uh, but <laughs> but like do do it right. Like everyone blames Ben Affleck and like Batfleck is amazing. Like I thought he was great. I thought he was a great Bruce Wayne. I thought he was great in the suit. 
it's just it's it's the writing. It's bad. I mean, I wouldn't even say that. I wouldn't even say that uh, Eisenberg was the worst thing about Batman versus Superman. I just think the movie itself was like even Eisenberg. Like I liked his quirkiness. I liked the voice he picked. Like it, again, you you put good writing in a good story. I think he would have done a decent job. But and that's the issue is that these actors that are trying to fulfill these roles, like Henry Cavill, great Superman. Again, Ben mm -hmm. Affleck, great Batman. Momoa, I mean, who else could make Aquaman cool? Like, right? I, I mean, again, you could, you could, you, you could question their Eisenberg pick, sure. But like, and and then you go further, and uh, you know, you got Gal Gadot as Wonder Woman, which is like the perfect pick. So you've got all these amazing actors that are playing the roles. Hell, go into their B-movie with Suicide Squad. Will Smith is Deadshot, spot on. Margot Robbie is Harley Quinn, perfect casting. I know people are back and forth about Leto as Joker. I thought he was good for the five minutes of screen time that he got. Uh, Killer Croc was good. Uh, I mean, they've got the cast nailed. They need new writers and a new director. <laughs> <laughs> they mm -hmm. they essentially need to reboot the franchise again, but keep all the same actors. <laughs> right. And I, I know that there's been discussion because like the Flash movie is supposed to be based on Flashpoint and they're already talking about like, oh, well, if we need to recast anybody, we'll just do it after the Flash movie because we're just going to reboot like the DC movie universes. And like that's the big thing that's going around is that discussion. Right. I guess there's some rumor about Leo playing Joker. Uh, there's, uh, oh, somebody else was, there, there have been multiple rumors about who would take over as Batman. Um, mm -hmm. but, uh, but see, I think that's just the people who are really to blame trying to pass the buck. I don't think anything needs to be recast. I, I think you've got a stellar cast. I think you like, that's what Marvel's going to be dealing with soon is having to either recast or replace, and mm -hmm. because, you know, of the whole Hollywood thing and like having to pay them mega bucks beyond a trilogy because then like it's the type cast clause or something like that. And we're getting into what we're in. Are we in we're in phase three now, right? Uh, yeah, I think we're still in phase three because phase four is uh, like with Captain Marvel and everything. Yeah. And that's going to be like post Infinity War. Yep. Yeah. So, I mean, I don't know, man, like Marvel's got the secret sauce and they're they're doing it. I mean, I know people who don't like comic books who like the Marvel movies. So whatever they're doing, they're doing it right. And uh, man, I I have a Batman tattoo. I've got a Joker tattoo. Joker is my favorite villain by far. Uh, I love. I mean, I, I don't know. I I don't know what DC needs to do. Maybe try and not do a universe. I mean, I get it. You've got Justice League, and it's a thing. But like. The standalone Batman movies, again, going back to Nolan and Bale, were great. Man of Steel, I know some Superman purists didn't like it because it was dark. And then obviously the whole killing Zod thing and Superman doesn't kill mm -hmm. people. Uh, but like other than a couple of the purists being upset, uh, it, I mean, they've got, again, I, I can't help but feel they've again, they've got the cast right. It's just they they don't have a writing staff that's skilled enough to make an engaging ensemble movie. And again, in my opinion, even Marvel struggles a little with that because people get cast to the side and it's just, it's hard to do. Yeah. It's one of those, um, it's one of those things now where, and we saw it in civil war. Right. And that's the, the one thing like infinity war is going to be that thing where they've got a, they've got a ton of people like not only like their their primary cast from across the the whole movie spectrum but you've got like those secondary and tertiary characters that are going to show up that are going to be shunted to the side and get like that two or three minutes of screen time that's the one thing i'm concerned about is the the thing that's coming out from what i've been hearing is that uh thanos isn't even going to collect all of them by like by the end of the movie it's going to be like halfway through he'll have like half of them and then it'll pick up in a, a different avengers movie down the road but it's like just trying to squeeze in all those people it, it's it's going to be a tough thing to do you know what it feels like when you get your 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 five seconds of screen time for a character it feels like they're putting a stinger in the movie like mm -hmm. the like the yeah. like the post-credit stinger 
Like, that's what it feels like. Like, when you get a character on screen for, like, 15 seconds or 30 seconds or whatever. Like, uh, that scene in uh, in Batman v Superman when uh, Bruce Wayne was sitting at the computer and you saw Aquaman and you saw uh, The Flash and stuff like that. Like, that was – it was like a stinger in the movie. Like, it was like a look what's coming next. Uh, and and it's it's hard to do that during the movie and do it right. Like, I actually – I didn't mind that scene in Batman v Superman. Like, it made sense. Like – Batman was looking up people and seeing like the five, what was it? Like it was like wonder woman's like SD card that he was hacking or something. Right. Um, right. Yeah. And like, and then the flash like comes back through time and like tries to warn him. Like, it, I mean, it, it, I, I, I didn't mind that scene, but like, again, yeah, you see people for seconds at a time and yeah, it, it just feels like, it, it, it almost feels like they're putting an advertisement for their next movie in the movie. Because, like, mm-hmm. hey, look yep. at this actor in this suit. Like, make sure you watch the next one to see what they're really capable of. Like, thanks. <laughs> yeah, it's definitely it's definitely going to be interesting. I know on the DC side of things, a lot of people are like, instead of going the Marvel route and, you know, building up the characters individually, they should have just launched a Justice League and had everybody in place and then spin out instead of having to do, like, the Batman, Superman, like, slowly do like do that one and then go into the justice league movie like you should have just done justice league right off the bat well it, the thing is, is they're trying to play catch up so they're in they're in fourth gear fifth gear whatever and they're skipping a lot of the rest stops uh because mm-hmm. marvel did it right the first time and like they took iron man and they took him they, they took it slow you had iron man one two avengers three you know you kind of went around uh, Captain America. Why did Superman get a standalone, but Batman didn't? Like, I get it. We've got mm-hmm. enough standalone Batman movies, but don't we also have enough Superman ones? Like, give exactly. us a, give us a Batman before we get Batman v Superman. Um, uh, and then why? Why was this universe? Because it changes. It, it, it's not the comic book universe. It's it's influenced by it, but it's like a it's like a multiverse. It's like it's its own thing. So why are we supposed to care about the justice league trying to save this universe when you haven't even properly introduced us to it yet? Because right. we don't know what's going on. Like we don't have uh we don't have a, like, yes, you have the generic Batman backstory, but we don't know about Ben Affleck's Batman and throughout the multiverses or whatever, you know, earth one, earth two, I, I forget who's this, who's, I don't read the, the, the actual book. So I forget the lingo, mm-hmm. but not every Batman has suffered the same fate, you know, and if you go way back, you've got classic Batman who was not this dark child, but now, and then, you know, once you had uh, the, the Dark Knight comics and Batman got darker and his suit went from like navy blue to black, and now you've got this not quite gothic, but like he's he's very dark and Bruce Wayne is broken emotionally and... It's it's kind of what they touched on in the Batman movies where he in in the Dark Knight when uh, Bale and Ledger had that amazing dialogue in the jail cell. And it was like, you need me as much as I need you. Like, we're both we're both freaks. (laughs) Um, And like and and it's it's true. Like it's it. Batman has problems. He's using them for good, which is wonderful in that character. But. Like, give us some of that. Like, we don't even care about the Batman in 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 the in the current Justice League because we don't like again, we have our generic Batman knowledge, but we don't know and then and then you like so you you rely on the fact that we're familiar with Batman, we know his backstory, we we I mean we got the hint of how his parents died because we've seen it a million times, so fine. So yeah. so you 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 lead us to believe that this is the Batman that we know and love, so they don't need to fully explain it because we're familiar with him. And then you show him using an assault rifle? Like, <laughs> you're telling us it's a different Batman. Introduce us to that Batman. Because it's not the Batman we know. Like, it just, I don't know. I i, I, I hope they do something right. I'm excited for the Leto Margot Robbie standalone Joker Harley movie because I can't, I mean, I, again, I know I'm in the minority here, but I loved what I saw of Leto. I liked like the, 
I mean, this is how I describe him. He's kind of like a somewhat gender fluid hipster gangster joker. <laughs> um, and really quick, and I know, um, I mean, we, we've hung up on comics for so long, but that's perfectly fine as long as you don't mind. But an interesting thing about Jokers. Now, I covered this on an episode of Mind of a Geek with, with Brian Ibbett. Look at the people who played Joker. Look at... Um, oh, he even made a, 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 a meme of it and uploaded it for us. But you have Heath Ledger, who was in Brokeback Mountain before he was Joker. You have Leto, who played a transgender character in Dallas Buyers Club before he played Joker. And then the kid that plays the Joker in the Gotham movies uh, was uh, played a gay character on some TV show. And it was just funny how there was that correlation of people who played Joker. <laughs> and That's wild. It's interesting because... Uh, like those elements, like you can very, and that's why I made the gender fluid comment with Joker. Cause I, I certainly didn't make it in any type of negative way. Um, mm -hmm. but he's very like, he's Joker. So he's, he's powerful and he's masculine, but he was also very effeminate and even somewhat erotic in some, like one of my favorite scenes with Leto in suicide squad was when he straddles the guy in the chair and he's like being like, like violently sexual, but also like villainous towards him. And like, I thought that was a really cool take on the character. And I gave Leto a lot of credit for doing something that we haven't seen from the Joker before. Exactly. And I think, you know, with, with how Marv Marvel's doing it one way, and I know we're going way long on comics, but that's okay. <laughs> um, like with, uh, with Marvel doing it one way, like the thing that I'd love to see is, Okay, you've got your Justice League people, fine. You're going to do the movies with them, fine. But I go ahead and start doing things like, and I, I haven't watched Suicide Squad or any of the, like, the Superman or the Superman versus Batman or just, obviously, I haven't watched any of them. I've watched, like, the Nolan stuff and then I stopped. <laughs> right. But, like, like, do some of the stuff that people aren't expecting. Like, I know that people are like, oh, a Gotham Sirens uh, movie would be great. Or a Titans movie, or you know, do a Swamp Thing movie. Like bring those characters that people might not be familiar with, but that you can make a movie about. That that maybe you know you don't have to spend the big money on it. You can you can invest a little bit and then start trying to get like those big returns on it and get some of those other characters out there. Or maybe just stick with TV where they're nailing it. Oh, absolutely. Like, that, that is like the one thing. Like I've watched Flash. I've watched Arrow. I've watched uh, the what? It, what is it? The League of uh, not uh, the the time not the time the time travel one. Um, um, whichever one it Legion? is. Legion. Uh, yeah, Le the the ex uh, no, the one no, where Legion's the white canaries in it. Yeah, the um, white canary one. Yeah, I don't. Um, I don't and remember the, My... the time traveling ship. Uh, it's going to kill me that I don't remember that name. <laughs> but like. Like Arrow, Flash, like uh, Legends of Tomorrow. That's what okay, it is. Yeah. Supergirl. Like, like I like all of those. I'm not caught up on them right. because it's just a lot of stuff to consume. But I like what they do, or I like the direct to to video animated movies that they're doing. My um, my favorite show as far as comic book shows right now is Gotham. I absolutely love Gotham. I think they're nailing it. I think that they are doing everything right with that show. Yeah, they they had some hangups in season one. They didn't quite know what they wanted to be. Like, are you a comic mm -hmm. book movie or are you a cop drama? But Ben McKinsey as commissioner, well, he's not commissioner yet, but as James Gordon is amazing. Uh, and then just your cast, like uh, David M Mazouz, Mazouz, um as Bruce is awesome, uh, the the guy Sean Pertwee that plays Alfred is great. Robin Lord Taylor as Penguin, like I mean, you you can't name other than uh, what's her name? Other than uh, other than Jada Pinkett Smith as Fish Mooney, that can go away because <laughs> I I I still say if she wasn't married to Will Smith, she wouldn't get any roles. Uh, but. I mean, and now you've got the Cameron Mahonigan, Mahonigan, uh, who plays 
uh, he's essentially the Joker, but they haven't called him the Joker yet, but they're hinting that they're going to start it in when he comes back again. But like in season three, they did the whole like face cut off from death of the family. And okay. oh, man, the guy nails it like him. Like he, it's great. Uh, Riddler is amazing in that show. Like there's no Batman, so they don't need to focus on Batman. Like there's Bruce Wayne, but he's a boy still, but he's getting there. Uh, he's, he's in the process where he's, he's become like a, a, an older teen vigilante, but I mean, it's, it, it, it's a great, great show. There's been so many cameos in it and uh, Michael Chiklis was in it for a while. Uh, it was, it was a, a great show with a great cast. So Gotham is where they're nailing it. And if they could take that type of character development to the big screen, that would be cool. Interesting side note about Gotham really quick before I know we're, we're approaching time. Gotham is on Fox. Gotham is obviously a DC property. Fox is owned mm -hmm. by Disney now. <laughs> yes. So, yes, it is. So Disney owns the distribution rights for a Batman property. <laughs> Which is really funny. <laughs> it you know the the way that all that works is just so interest like it's so weird and so like you don't like you don't think about it but then you start and it's like wow just Disney will I end can't up believe it. Disney will end up owning DC and then we'll get Avengers vs Justice League and everyone will be happy. <laughs> <laughs> thirty thirty years later, right? Yeah, I mean it's after they've built it up properly, right? Yeah. yeah. Well, I mean, they saved Spider-Man. I mean, that seems to be the secret sauce. People would argue it doesn't work with Star Wars, but when it comes to everything else, you just give it to Disney and let Disney fix it. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, they did it with Spider-Man. I'm excited to see the first X-Men mo the X-Men movie. I'm excited to see the first one now that Disney owns it. Uh I'm excited to see I know that uh, Hugh Jackman was saying that the only way he would come back as Wolverine is if he gets to be in an Avengers movie. Now he can. Mm -hmm. So that right. makes me excited. No, now that Disney is – now that everything but Spider-Man, but they have the agreement with Sony, so that works too. Now that everything Marvel proper is under Disney's umbrella, I'm super pumped to see what uh, what the, the fourth stage would be. Yeah, it's def especially not only like the fourth, but like the the even the unannounced like fifth, like the fifth phase, because, you know, we have we have Black Panther, we've got Captain Marvel, we've got like the Avengers four Infinity War and then like Avengers five, which is untitled at this point. Isn't it Infinity? Because it was Infinity War part one and two, right? It was supposed to be like that, but then they said, oh, we're going to just make four Infinity War and then, you know, five is untitled. Oh, but, you okay. know, it's, it's got to have Thanos at that point. Right. I thought it was – because I, I thought I had read that it was going to be – instead of part one and two, it was going to be Infinity War and Infinity Gauntlet. But maybe that was just an assumption. Prob uh, yeah, I don't think I've seen anything announced, but – I'm sure it'll it'll come out soon enough right. because I mean, dude, we're getting got to have that. We're getting a Black Widow movie. I was so pumped when I saw that. And well, it's it has a director, <laughs> so I don't want to get right. too excited. But it's it's being talked about, which makes me excited. Yeah, and that that's the thing, you know. Before we switch over, switch gears on on stuff, but I I think that's the one thing that Marvel missed the boat on is either doing a the Black Widow solo earlier or doing a Black Widow Hawkeye movie. That would be cool too. That that's what should have been done uh, earlier, like er, like Phase Two. Um, but you know, again, they they've only got so many movies and. Now that they're releasing like three movies in a year at certain points, it's, it's just how I know that a lot of people are like, oh, how many, you know, superhero movies can you have? But right at the same time, they're not really superhero. Again, movies. I think that's that's where it all comes down to is they're not. So, nope. I, yeah, no, it's 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 a good time to be a geek, man. It is. We're out of the basement, <laughs> we but now are. we have to deal with it. As we said, you know, we have to deal with the the people talking about like, oh, you're taking away my my thing. Well, you know what? Just be inclusive. Yeah, ex exactly. Be good. be inclusive. Whether it's your comics or if, if if you take anything from what I've said the past hour, yeah, be inclusive. Whether it's comics <laughs> or gaming, console gamers aren't any less of gamers. People who like DC or no, I mean, why does everything have to be a versus? Look at Batman versus Superman as an example. If you put verses in the title, it's bad. <laughs> <laughs> be all inclusive. Uh, we're all here for the same reason. We all want something that we enjoy. And 
not everything's going to be for everybody. So you know what? If you don't enjoy something, but somebody else does, let them enjoy it. Because the next thing, it might be the other way around. Exactly. And if everyone liked the same thing, how boring would that be? It would just, it would, it would, it would, it would be bad. It would be bad. (laughs) Now, before we go, I wanted to talk to you about like, as I mentioned, Inked, Inked Geek Studios. I've been on one of your shows, but talk to us about what what you do and all the shows that you you put out there. All right, cool. So I uh, I, I mentioned it a little bit at the top. So I started podcasting in June of 2014 uh, with Inked Geek Studios. Um, I am Inked and I am a geek, so hence the title. Uh, and I tell you, the hardest thing, the only thing harder than getting everybody to get along these days is naming something something that hasn't been already taken. <laughs> So, right. uh, yeah, so Inked Geek Studios, uh, it's, it's, I mean, it's, it's more so IG Studios too, uh, like Inked Geek is still the name, but as you could tell with David there, it kind of becomes a tongue twister after a while. Uh, so it's, yeah, um, started in 2014 with a show called Geek Access. Uh, it was me and two guys I met actually playing Swotor. Uh, so back in, in 2013 and 2014. Uh, so we, we got the show off the ground and it just kind of grew. Uh, I, it, that was an interesting show because I was a big podcast fan and I loved to talk. So it worked out well. The two guys that were on the show with me, they were friends and they certainly came to the show with knowledge, but they didn't listen to podcasts. And it was so it was it was an interesting dynamic. And it quickly became that I wanted more, not from the show. The show was great, but more from the studio. I wanted more podcasty podcasts. Uh, okay. So I started a show called Mind of a Geek. Uh, and this was in... 2015 um it's on it's, it goes by so fast i forget uh so yeah 2015 it was uh december of 2015 uh very first episode was with a good friend of mine uh jf dubo uh who is an incredible author and podcaster himself and uh and it just kind of took off and it, it's become popular it's easily the most popular show on the network and we have a great time uh, it's me and uh, my best friend of 17 years, uh, Brandon Raymond, and we hang out with a different guest every week. Uh, many guests have had repeat uh, appearances because they just come back and, and hang out. And those are really the fun, fun episodes. Not that they aren't all fun, but because where that guest has already been kind of introduced to our community, we don't need to do the whole introductory thing so much. And it just becomes free flowing conversation. And it, it goes, especially when you throw the live chat room in there, it goes in so many directions and they are really fun to do. Uh, so and again, I mean, podcasters the likes of you know scott johnson uh justin robert young from frog pants and diamond club uh steven schleicher from major spoilers if you're really big into the comic book discussion um uh uh bill duran uh Chinbeard from punished props if you're into cosplay and prop building like if there's something that you are a fan of very very akin to to your show here if there's something that you are a fan of odds are there's been at least a guest on the show who is into that. So, and it's really cool. Mm -hmm. I've learned so much about so many different things. Like I back to like, you know, discussion, discussing and and talking about things and, and trying to be knowledgeable. That's my biggest takeaway from that show is not just meeting people, but learning about what they love, which therefore informs my opinion because it makes me more knowledgeable about different things. And I really Mm -hmm. enjoy that. So beyond mind of a geek, we do kind of a geek general conversation show called all geeked up. It was formerly Sonics and Sabres. Uh, It was, uh, it was star Wars and doctor who focused. And what we noticed was as the show went on week to week, it became less strictly Doctor Who and Star Wars and more just general conversation. So we rebranded it and relaunched it and, uh, you know, and All Geeked Up was born. And uh, and now that's a really fun show. Today's episode, well, I, I guess, I mean, you know, we're, we're recording in advance, but like, you know, episodes in general include, I mean, it's games, it's movies, it's, it's what's happening in, in our life. Like, it's just, it's random general. Again, All Geeked Up. Uh, is is exactly what it sounds like. Uh, my friend Amy Frost and I do a show called Indie Case Files, where we talk about indie video games. That's every other Monday um, that, that records at 9.30. And uh, occasionally we do a wrestling podcast called That Was Awesome, which is a WWE 
and sometimes local indie wrestling. Uh, it, it's but primarily a WWE pay per view uh, watch along and review podcast that we'll do whenever they have uh, a big pay per view event. If you're a fan of professional wrestling, mm-hmm. and that. I mean, we have some other things that, I mean, we have a show called Sincast, which is kind of just like an open table. If you have something you're pissed off about, come over and vent. <laughs> but that show doesn't have a schedule. Um, we encourage anyone that likes kind of our one-offs on top of our podcast feeds, which every show has its own. Uh, we have the Inked Geek Studios mega feed, which has all the shows as well as like a one-off here or there. So it's cool to subscribe to that. And then if you like the live stuff, uh, inkedgeekstudios.tv. Uh, is where all the live stuff is. And that's just, that's a direct link to our Twitch page. And uh, if you follow us there and turn on notifications whenever we go live. Um, so if there is something that comes on randomly or something that comes on slightly out of schedule, uh, you know, having those notifications on is always great. Oh yeah. I always, always get the notifications. I'm like, Oh, that's right. It's Friday. They're doing, you know, they, they're doing their live show and it's like, okay, I wonder who they got. Yeah, it's it's a lot of fun, man. We uh, season five kicked off of season five of Mind of a Geek, I should say, kicked off two weeks ago. Uh, we had Jackie Hearn from Diamond Club. She does all the booking for their show Cord Killers. Uh, if you're familiar with any of their stuff, so she was on for episode one, and then we went Diamond Club again with episode two. We had Justin Robert Young um, from uh, Jury and uh, the Politics X Three podcast, and uh, so he and Night Attack is his big big one. But uh, so he was on. Uh, this week we're off. I mentioned indie wrestling. There's a, a local indie wrestling event this Friday, so no podcast. Uh, oh, again, I, I keep forgetting the the <laughs> yes. the April <laughs> the delay. Um, so go back and check out the start of season five, <laughs> um, <laughs> which by the time this records uh, or airs will be uh, Mike TV will have been on. Uh, JF Dubo will have been on. Tawny Platus from the Dirty Bits podcast. So yeah, season five is looking really good. And at the time of this being uploaded, um, it uh, there's still about four weeks left of season five. So hop on and and, and check it out. Season five ends uh, on May fourth uh, with May the fourth be with you day. Uh, and final guest of the season is going to be Brett Stewart from uh, his new movie podcast with I forget the name of because he changed the name. <laughs> Uh, movie go round. There you go. Movie go round. So yeah. So movie go round and silver screens and politics. There we go. So thank you. I appreciate that. Uh, Brett would be upset with me. Um, but yeah. And then we'll take a, <laughs> we'll take a couple weeks off, and season six will start uh, probably uh, end of May, early June. Awesome. And you and I'll have the the links to all the the websites and whatnot for you, so that way, because I know there's a lot of them. I imagine. Um, really, inkgeekstudios dot com and uh. The beauty of the pre-recording, uh, inkedgeekstudios.com slash shows will uh, be a web will be a, a, a subsite of the website that will have. It's just going to be an embedded Google Calendar that will have every show, its day, and the time of recording, and the expected time of uploading for the podcast feed. Awesome. So that way, people that are listening can definitely go and check out the website and see everything that you've got because you have a, a uh, as you said, you got so many different shows. You have so much across the board that people can go and take a look at and just pick and choose and go and take a listen. Right. That's the goal, casting the net. There you go. Well, uh, Nate, it was great to have you on this podcast. And I know we didn't like hit some of the certain things, but I really loved the discussion that we had about like, just fandom in general it's it's really good to just have somebody to talk about like you know because we're we're both from like that same age age range just to go over like fandom and the evolve it like how it's evolved from like when we were into it to like now yeah and and you know what it means to be a geek and uh or a nerd or or whatever whatever word that you associate with best and yeah, no, I man, if you had told me before the podcast that I could sit here and talk to you for an hour about comics and comic book movies, uh, I wouldn't have thought. Uh, I I had a lot of fun because I, I I dug into the brain a little bit and I pulled out some some factoids that I didn't even realize were in there and they just kind of came to me. So no, this was a blast, man. I appreciate you having me on. This was I'll, I'll, this was incredibly fun. Thank you for listening to Tales from the Fandom. Subscribe to us on iTunes or your podcast app of choice. Follow us on Facebook at www.facebook.com slash Tales from the Fandom to see photos, links, leave feedback and check out upcoming guests. If you'd like to be a guest, 
email david at talesfromthefandom at gmail.com.